the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the World Bank says Sri Lanka's economy has stabilized with growth expected to reach 4.4% in 2024, surpassing earlier forecasts. President Anur Kumar Sanayaka meets with officials of two major revenue collectors, the Customs and Inland Revenue Departments, to discuss enhancing tax collection. The Colombo Stock Exchange is seeing a more positive outlook today despite the red closing of the bourses locked yesterday. The hump day drop was recovered with the ASPI and the S&P SL20 recorded for a green close tomorrow as well. And US stocks logged a second straight day of solid gain, with the S&P 500 scoring its 44th record closing high of the year after the release of the Federal Reserve meeting minutes and ahead of the September inflation date. From Studio 24, here's Anubi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The World Bank says Sri Lanka's economy has stabilized, with growth expected to reach 4.4% in 2024, surpassing earlier forecasts. This positive outlook follows four consecutive quarters of growth driven by the industrial and tourism sectors and supported by critically structural and policy reforms. Released today, the World Bank's biannual Sri Lanka development update, titled Opening Up to the Future, cautions that the recovery remains fragile and hinges on maintaining macroeconomic stability, successfully restructuring debt and continuing structural reforms to increase medium-term growth and reduce poverty. Key reforms aimed at boosting exports, attracting foreign investment, enhancing female labor force participation, improving productivity and addressing challenges such as poverty, food insecurity and vulnerabilities in the financial sector are crucial for achieving more inclusive and sustainable growth. The report underscores the country's potential for achieving higher and sustainable growth through trade. Sri Lanka has an untapped export potential estimated at $10 billion annually, which could create approximately 142,500 new jobs. There is significant opportunity for diversifying and expanding exports in manufacturing, services and agriculture, provided the necessary reforms are implemented. Looking ahead, the report projects a modest growth of 3.5% in 2025. Growth is then expected to follow a modest path with a medium term due to the scarring effects of the economic crisis. Poverty is expected to gradually decline but remain about 20% until 2026. Inflation is likely to stay below the central bank's target of 5% in 2024, gradually increasing as demand picks up. The current account is projected to remain in surplus in 2024, driven by tourism and revenue. But of course this policy consistency, so the fiscal, fiscal adjustment, uh, the monetary policy, financial sector policies, a lot of what's happened and been put in place has contributed to the stabilization and it's important to, to continue uh, with those policies. Um, of course, yeah, I mean over time there may be adjustments required but this is, to, you need to ensure the stability and that consistency is important. Um, then I think I moved on to the, the next side was around these structural reforms. And I think really what's going to mm -hmm. avoid another crisis is particularly around this inclusive, inclusive and sustainable growth. So reforms that can really, uh, I think Shruti showed the projection, it, I think it was a 4.4 this, this year, and then it tailors a bit down and looks like it's going to be around 3% over the medium term, which, which we wouldn't say is sort of growth that's going to excite the country or the world, um, I mean, that's to some extent, I think we're calling it passenger growth in a sense. Sri Lanka really needs to try and transform that and, and get onto a high level of growth uh, in a more inclusive and sustainable way. I'll keep emphasizing that. <laughs> Sri Lanka's President Anuradhisa Naika has met with officials of two major revenue collectors, the Customs and Inland Revenue Departments, to discuss enhancing tax collection. The Sarnayaka met senior officials from both the Sri Lanka Customs Department and the Inland Revenue Department at the Presidential Secretariat. The PMD said the discussions centered on strategies to enhance revenue generation and improve operational efficiency within both departments in line with the government's broader economic mandate. The officials explained the challenges they face in managing revenue and tackling tax evasion and stressed the importance of strengthening coordination between the Inland Revenue Department and Customs to effect combat these issues. Better collaboration would ensure more robust enforcement of tax laws and prevent tax leakage, further boosting the country's revenue collection. The Sanayaka Secretary Nandika Sanat Kumanayaka, who was an Assistant Superintendent of Sri Lankan Customs, was also present. 
The Ceylon Chamber of Commerce and the Sri Lanka Banks Association signed a Memorandum of Understanding to formalize and strengthen their ongoing partnership in promoting sustainable finance and financial inclusion in Sri Lanka. The two organizations, through this partnership, aim to engage in building both demand-side and supply-side capacity and connectivity on sustainable finance in advancing the Sustainable Finance Roadmap for Sri Lanka and the National Financial Inclusion Strategy. A key outcome aimed for through the MOU is to enable greater access for financing for Sri Lanka's private sector, especially the export-oriented value chains and SME sector, to enable their sustainability transitions. The Ceylon Chamber's vision the 2030 five-year economic plan outlines key targets including increasing the share of Sri Lanka's exports to 30% of GDP and increasing the SME contribution to the economy to 60% of the GDP. With global trade, finance and investment regimes increasingly emphasizing sustainability, Sri Lanka's private sector and industry must rapidly transition and build capacity to remain competitive in international markets. With the banking sector accounting for over 60% of Sri Lanka's financial sector assets, SLBA has been actively supporting Sri Lanka's green economy transition and financial inclusion with its voluntary sustainable banking initiative since 2015. While building internal capacity within the banking sector, SBI has also engaged with other sector associations to promote innovative sustainable finance solutions. The Plantation Industries Ministry has announced the appointment of Rajpal Obesekara as the new chairman of the Sri Lanka Tea Board. The appointment comes into effect from the 4th of October 2024. He succeeds Niraj Damel, who served as chairman since June 2022. Obesekara brings in decades of experience in the private sector and has a long track record of innovative and diverse teams in different industries. The Chamber of Construction Industry of Sri Lanka held the launch of the Premier Build SL Housing and Construction Expo 2025. The CCI President, members of the Board of Management and the Council members of the Chamber, long-standing exhibitors at the previous Build SL Expos last year, valued sponsors and industry leaders participated at the event. The Build SL Expo 2025 is due to be held on May 30th, 31st and June 1st as the 20th edition at the Seramavo Bandaranaka Convention Centre, BMICH. The president of CCI, architect Jayant Pereira, in his speech noted that success of the construction industry is the culmination of the successes of its stakeholders, that is the architects, engineers and other related professionals, contractors, material producers and suppliers for the construction industry. CCI's CEO and Secretary General for English Nisanka N. Vijayaratna stated that the Build SL 2025 launch is held at a time when the construction industry is emerging from a recession that lasted four years, from 2020 to 2023. This year, during the first two quarters, the construction industry recorded a growth of 14.2% and 15.5% respectively. With foreign debt restructuring completed under the IMF program, all the donor-funded projects that were suspended are due to commence in the near future. With this unexpected increase in tourism and the construction industry is due to rebound in the growth trajectory in the coming months. With this and the expected increase in tourism and the construction industry is due to rebound in the growth trajectory in the coming months. Let's take a short commercial break. Market updates on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The Colombo Stock Exchange is seeing a more positive outlook today, despite the red closing of the bourses locked yesterday. The hump day drop was recovered with the ASPI and the S&P SL20 recorded for a green close tomorrow as well. For more on today's trading sessions, we have with us Jani Chakatawapitia from Capital Alliance Securities. Yes, Sanavi. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a positive note compared to the previous trading session due to a roller coaster of buying and selling among the participants. The market ended at 12,164 points, marking a 12.24 point increase from the previous session, with a turnover of 1.6 billion rupees. The SL20 index also experienced an upward movement of 7.65 points to end the day at 3,001 points. 
notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors, with high turnovers and crossings recorded on John Q's Holdings and Haley's PLC. The top five gainers for the day were Nation Lanka Finance, Blue Diamonds Jewelry, Voting and Non-Voting, Industrial Asphalts, and Colombo Investment Trust. The top five losers for the day were UB Finance, SMB Leasing, Kothmale Holdings, the Autodrome PLC, Ceylon Printers, and Lanka Ventures PLC. The economic situation continues to see an easing across the nation, and it is specifically reflected in the economic indicators and indexes, with deflation and revenue increases recorded. For more details, we have with us Anjali Matthews from First Capital Holdings. The Colombo Bourse closed another day in green, to which positive developments to Sri Lanka's budget deficit and tax revenue have contributed. As uncertainties have subsided, government borrowing requirements have seen a reduction, leading to stronger investments. Sri Lanka's tax revenues jumped 43% to 2,156 billion rupees in the first seven months of 2024, which was driven by higher rates and improved economic growth, thanks to the central bank's monetary stability and effective inflation control, keeping inflation below the 5% target. Non-tax revenues also rose by 30% to 151.3 billion rupees, and the overall budget deficit fell by 41% to 1,470 billion rupees, indicating better fiscal health, with tax revenues increasing from 5% to 6.3% of GDP. Current spending has also remained stable at 2,673 billion rupees, helped by a drop in interest costs from 1,498 billion rupees to 1,392 billion rupees due to lower treasury yields and restructuring of debt. Since September 2022, the central bank has successfully avoided new inflation, resulting in lower prices for traded goods and an appreciation of the exchange rate. Looking ahead, the new government plans to reduce the VAT on some items, which may affect revenues while considering cuts to income tax thresholds, possibly offset by salary increases in 2025. The revenue deficit has also improved to 517 billion rupees, which is 1.6% of GDP from 1,161 billion rupees last year, and capital spending increased by 16% to 361.5 billion rupees, supported by resumed foreign funded projects. A primary surplus of 519.4 billion rupees was also recorded, up from 27.4 billion rupees last year. Gold prices nudged higher today as market participants remain on edge in anticipation of the critical U.S. inflation data scheduled for release later in the day. This data is anticipated to provide insights into the Federal Reserve's prospective monetary policy direction. Spot gold rose by 0.2%, reaching $2,613.70 per ounce following a period of decline over the past six sessions. Notably, gold prices had reached an all-time high last month, underscoring the metal's volatile nature in the current current economic climate. Concurrently, U.S. gold futures mirror this trend, also increasing by 0.2% to $2,630.80 per ounce. As traders brace for the inflation report, the market's focus remains sharply tuned to how this data might influence the Fed strategies moving forward. Oil prices rose today underpinned by a spike in fall demand as a major storm barreled into Florida and concerns about potential supply disruptions in the Middle East amid heightened tensions between Israel and major oil producer Iran. Brent crude futures rose 0.3% to $76.82 a barrel, while the U.S. West Texas Intermediate futures were up 0.4% at $73.52 a barrel. The world's largest oil producer and consumer has been hit by a second major storm storm, Hurricane Milton, which made landfall on Florida's west coast, spawning tornadoes and threatening surges of seawater. The storm has already driven up demand for gasoline in the state, with about a quarter of full stations selling out of supplies, which has helped to support crude prices.
The Sri Lankan rupee has depreciated slightly against the US dollar today compared to yesterday, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the buying rate of the US dollar has increased, while the selling rate, which had dropped last week, has increased yesterday. On a positive note, the Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated against a range of foreign currencies. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is performing against other global currencies. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back. Sarath Ganegota has been appointed as the new chairman of Sri Lankan Airlines effective from today. Meanwhile, a new board of directors has also been appointed to Sri Lanka's national career under the chairmanship of Mr. Ganegota. A prominent business leader, Mr. Ganegota currently serves as the group executive director of Sri Lankan multinational Haley's PLC and deputy chairman of LMX PLC. He is a fellow member of CS Sri Lanka and a member of the Institute of Chartered Management Accountants of Australia. He holds an MBA from the Postgraduate Institute of Management, University of Sri Jayavardhanapura. He held several senior management positions in large private entities in Sri Lanka and overseas. Hamidia, Sri Lanka's leading menswear brand synonymous with style and quality, unveiled its exclusive global wedding collection to celebrate its 75th anniversary at a glamorous event held at the Envoy Mansion, Colombo. The star Saturday evening showcased the brand's latest collection designed to cater to the modern groom while honouring Hamidia's rich legacy in the fashion industry. The event drew a distinguished crowd of celebrities, fashion influencers and key figures from the wedding industry who gathered to witness the unveiling of the collection. During the event, Hamidia announced a donation of 1 million rupees to the Indira Cancer Trust from the proceeds of their pink collection, a special range designed to support breast cancer awareness and detection. Additionally, the Indira Cancer Trust will receive 30% of the proceeds from each purchase of these products. This ongoing initiative reflects Hamidia's commitment to giving back to the community through its My Friend Foundation. Hamidia's global wedding collection offers a versatile range of outfits tailored for every wedding theme and a groom's personality, whether it's a beach wedding, garden ceremony, destination event or traditional and religious occasions such as Hindu and Catholic weddings. The collection includes luxurious western suits, modern national attire, rich Indian ethnic wear, Jodhpur suits, Shervani and more, ensuring that every groom shines on his special day. With over 300 fabrics sourced from Italy, Europe and Asia, including renowned brands like Albini, Thomas Mason, Laura Piana, Domoi, Amano Gilda Zegna, VBZ and Tessitura Monti, Hamidia reaffirms its commitment to providing the finest quality materials. In a groundbreaking move and for the first time in the automotive battery industry in Sri Lanka, Brown's Battery and Tire Strategic Business Unit recently launched the Brown's e battery warranty activation. This marks a milestone in implementation of the first ever paperless e-warranty in the Sri Lankan automotive battery sector, thereby transforming customer experience from this point forward. With this new innovation, customers can now disregard traditional printed warranty cards by opting for a paperless solution. The warranty will be activated by Excite agents via the Brown's eCare app, an interface exclusively designed and developed in-house by Brown's Digital Transformation Solutions. With the introduction of this new platform, access via mobile, web and SMS, registered dealers will be able to effortlessly activate Exide e-warranty for purchased batteries. They could also weave and share the e-warranty with the customer while checking relevant details on the go. Other value-added features include access to warranty details by scanning the QR code on the battery or by submitting the serial, vehicle or mobile number. Consumers can additionally search and reach a dealer based on live locations via maps, make calls and request a service. Users will furthermore receive alerts on service dates, battery maintenance and more. 
e-channeling. Sri Lanka's leading digital health platform has launched its e-premium membership category and entered into a strategic partnership with Bristol Institute Colombo. The collaboration will provide exclusive discounts on educational programs for eChanneling's e-premium members, in addition to a host of benefits and privileges, reinforcing the company's commitment to deliver value beyond healthcare services. The Memorandum of Understanding was signed in August at the Bristol Institute between Isiru Disanayake, the Chief Commercial Officer of eChanneling, and Dilshah Jeffrey, the Chief Operating Officer of Bristol Institute. Bristol Institute Colombo is a higher education institute offering globally recognized degree programs in business, finance and management. National Development Bank PLC announced that its revolutionary NDB Woods Pay offering has won the prestigious Excellence in Innovation Payments Award at the Global Banking and Finance Awards 2024 in the United Kingdom. This international recognition highlights NDB's commitment to advancing digital innovation in the financial services sector, further cementing its role as a leader in banking technology. Since its inception in 2011, the Global Banking and Financing Awards have celebrated innovation, achievement and excellence within the global financial community. The awards recognize companies of all sizes that demonstrate expertise and forward-thinking strategies across a variety of financial sectors. NDB's win in excellence in innovation category underscores the bank's dedication to delivering cutting-edge solutions tailored to modern customer needs. NDB RispPay is Sri Lanka's first-ever wearable payment solution, offering customers a seamless and secure way to manage their finances on the go. Powered by Visa, NDB RispPay has revolutionized how customers interact with everyday transactions, enabling them to make payments with a simple tap of the wrist. This innovation exemplifies NDB's digital-first strategy, which aims to integrate technology into every facet of banking, ensuring convenience, security and accessibility. The Global Banking and Finance Awards span various categories including banking, technology, corporate governance, asset management and corporate social responsibility. NDB's win highlights its dedication to remaining at the forefront of technological advancements, offering financial products that enhance the customer experience and set new standards in the banking industry. Going in for a short commercial break, now we'll be right back with Global Updates. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. More station stocks edged higher today with attention on crucial U.S. inflation data for insights into interest rates. Chinese markets, however, experienced significant volatility as Beijing signaled intentions for additional fiscal stimulus measures. Regional markets drew positive momentum from Wall Street, but the Dow Jones Industrial Average achieved a record closing high following the release of the Federal Reserve's September meeting minutes, indicating support for a 50 basis point cut. Despite this, U.S. stock index futures remained flat during Asian trading, as the minutes also revealed that the Fed refrained from committing to a specific pace for future interest rate cuts. China Shanghai Shenzhen CSI 300 and Shanghai Composite Indexes swung around 1% in choppy trade after a steep decline yesterday. U.S. stocks lodged a second straight day of solid gains yesterday, with S&P 500 scoring its 44th record closing high of the year after the release of Federal Reserve minuting minutes and ahead of the September inflation data. Wall Street's main indexes closed up on Wednesday, with the S&P 500 scoring its 44th record closing high of the year. The Dow gained 1 percent to also notch a record closing high, the S&P added 7 tenths of a percent, and the Nasdaq climbed 6 tenths. Minutes of the Federal Reserve's September policy meeting showed a substantial majority of officials supported an outsized half-point rate cut. Traders are now pricing in a roughly 80 percent chance of a quarter-point rate cut at the Fed's November meeting, according to CME's FedWatch tool after September's surprisingly strong jobs report suggested the economy is in better shape than investors had feared. Wednesday's notable stock moves included Alphabet, which paired losses to finish down 1.5 percent after the Justice Department said it may ask a judge to force Google to divest parts of its business. 
Shares of Boeing shed more than 3 percent after talks between the aerospace company and its key manufacturing union broke down. Among gainers, shares of Norwegian Cruise Line climbed nearly 11 percent after Citi upgraded its stock rating to buy. Riding the wave was Carnival, whose shares rose 7 percent, while Royal Caribbean Cruises added more than 5 percent. And shares of Arcadium Lithium soared more than 30 percent after Rio Tinto said it would acquire the miner for $6.7 billion. The World Travel and Tourism Council said business travel is set to surpass pre-pandemic levels in 2024, faster than previously predicted, to reach a record 1.5 trillion US dollars. The rise of remote working during the pandemic had a disproportionate effect on corporate travel compared to leisure travel, with virtual platforms replacing face-to-face -face meetings. According to WTTC's According to WTTC's 2024 Economic Impact Trends report, business travel spending in the US, which accounted for 30% of the global total in 2019, is expected to reach 472 billion US dollars this year, 13.4% above the country's 2019 record. In China, the world's second largest market for business travel spending is forecast to grow 13.1% above the 2019 to reach almost $211 billion. Business travel spend in Germany, the third largest, is set to reach $87.5 billion, just under 1% above the 2019 peak, while business travel in the UK and France is expected to inject a record-breaking $84.1 billion and $42.1 billion into their respective economies. And that's all from us here at the Nightly Business Report. Join us again tomorrow for more key updates across the business globe. I am Sanu Mudan Nayaka. Thank you for watching. Good night.